Welcome to Bella Coco Crochet. I'm Sarah Jane and this is the place to learn crochet and improve your skills. For this pattern you need an Aran weight yarn. I've used this yarn from Truly Yarn. It's 100% superwash merino and comes in 115 gram skeins. I've used a 5mm crochet hook but remember to adapt your hook size to suit your personal tension. You will also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle. Stitch markers may come in handy but aren't essential. Just a quick reminder that I always leave all of the information in the description box so click the show more button below this video. Okay let's get started. So these are the Truly Wrist Warmers, which are on my channel. Hopefully you've already made these, or you might have some other wrist warmers which you might want to convert. This should work well if you have wrist warmers which are made with a flat edge, and then you just have this opening here. This opening is around two and a half inches and we're going to be making a thumb for here. And then we're also going to be attaching the convertible section um, along the top just here. So if you do have some different style wrist warmers, you will need to be making sure that you have a place to be put in some stitches. We're going to be working around the double crochets, the post of the double crochet. So have a look to see if there's a suitable area that you can add that. So let's go ahead and first start with creating the thumb. So I'm going to take the main colour and I'm going to create a slip knot on my crochet hook. You can do this in whichever method you prefer. And then I'm going to go ahead and locate the bottom seam. So where the base of the thumb is going to be and insert my hook into that section. Now I'm going to go around where the sewing seam is, but I don't want to just go around one of those pieces. I want to maybe go down to the second one so that it's wrapping around uh, two pieces of yarn just to make it a bit more sturdy. So once I've inserted my hook into that space, I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop and I'll have two loops on my hook and then I'll yarn over and pull through two and that creates the standing double crochet. So that is my first stitch. I'm then going to evenly work nine double crochets along the row ends to the top of the thumb hole. So I want to go into the row ends like so, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. That's one, one double crochet. And then I'll go into the next stitch, two, and then find the next space, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if you get to the top of your thumb hole and you find that um, it's not even or you don't have enough stitches or you have too many, then just undo it and just re-space those stitches just as long as it looks nice and even for this section. We're now going to be working into the seam again, so the top seam. So I'm just going to go under that seam so that I have two loops on my hook so it's a bit more sturdy and then I'm going to work nine double crochets back down to the bottom of the thumb hole so we've just done three four five six seven eight and my last one here is nine. So that's a double crochet at the bottom, nine across one side, a double crochet at the top and nine across the other. So in total we have 20 double crochets. We're going to join with a slip stitch into that very first 
double crochet so that's standing double crochet and there we have completed our first round so for round two we're going to chain two which does not count as a stitch here or throughout this section and then we're going to do a half treble into the first stitch so a half treble in the US is known as a half double and we're going to be working into this very first stitch so right at the base of the chain two because that does not count as a stitch we will yarn over go into that stitch yarn over and pull through three loops on the hook yarn over pull through all three loops on the hook now we are going to be joining in that stitch at the end of the row or the end of the round so if you want to you can place a stitch marker just so you know where that very first stitch is so we have that first half treble crochet then we're going to do five more half treble crochets so into the next stitch one and the next two three four and five and now we're going to do nine double crochets so we're going to go straight into a double crochet into that next stitch one two three four turn in the work five six seven eight and nine and then we're going to do five half trebles so yarn over insert into that next stitch one two three four and five so we've come to that last stitch and we're going to remove the stitch marker and join with a slip stitch into that very first stitch So in that round we have 20, uh, 20 stitches again and then for round three we're going to chain two again this does not count as a stitch. We're going to do a half treble into that very first stitch so at the base of that chain two and I'm going to join sorry I'm going to place a stitch marker into that first stitch and then we're going to start decreasing this round. So we're going to do a half treble two together. And the way that we do this is we're going to start in that next stitch along. So we yarn over, go into that stitch, yarn over, pull through three loops on the hook, and then yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, you'll have one, two, three, four, five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all five loops on that hook, and that is a half treble two together. But we're going to do that twice. So when you do the next one, make sure that you go into the next stitch. You can see that this um, half treble two together pulls this stitch, this chain slightly, this stitch. So we're going to move into the next one. So yarn over, go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, five loops on the hook, and then yarn over, pull through all five loops on the hook. After you've done your two half treble two together, we're then going to do 11 double crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, 
five, turn the work, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. After your 11 double crochets, we're then going to do another two um, half treble two togethers. So yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn, yarn over, pull through all five loops on the hook. And then we have our last two stitches remaining. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert, and yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all five of those loops on the hook. We can remove our stitch marker and go ahead and slip stitch into the top of that stitch. And there we have round three. So in this round, we now have 16 stitches. For round four, we're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And then we're going to do a double crochet into the uh, first stitch. So we look at the base of this stitch and work a double crochet into there. And then I'm going to place my stitch marker into that stitch. We're going to decrease again and we're going to do a double crochet two together this time. So a slightly smaller stitch. So we go into that next stitch, straight into it, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, um, three loops on the hook, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. So that's a double crochet two together. We're then going to do 11 double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then we're going to finish with double crochet two together. So into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. Take out that first stitch and join with a slip stitch. Like so. So at the end of round four, we have 14 uh, stitches. So now we're going to move on to round five where we're going to chain one, double crochet in that first stitch and mark the stitch. And then double crochet in each stitch all the way round. So we're going to have 14 double crochets. So make sure that you count your stitches um, and then meet me back once you've done your 14 double crochets. So once you've gone all the way around with your 14 double crochets, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that very first stitch and then chain up one ready for your next round. Now rounds six, seven, eight and nine are exactly the same as round five. So just one double crochet in each stitch all the way round, making sure that you are counting your stitches. Go ahead, pause video, work those rounds, six, seven, eight and nine, one double crochet in each stitch, 14 stitches in each round, and then meet me back for round 10. So I've just worked rounds six, seven, eight and nine um, with all one double crochet in each round. If you feel like you have a long thumb and you want to go a little bit 
um, longer with this then you can absolutely do that because we are going to start to decrease our rounds now to round off the end of the thumb so if you want to elongate this you can add a few more rounds or another round depending on how you feel for your particular size mitt so for round 10 we're going to chain one and then we're going to do one double crochet into that first stitch and again mark the stitch and then we're going to do a double crochet two together so just as we did before so insert the um, hook into the next stitch then into the next stitch and yarn over pull through three and then we have a little pattern repeat we're going to double crochet and then double crochet two together and we'll do that four times so that's the first time double crochet double crochet two together that's the second time double crochet double crochet two together that's the third and then double crochet double crochet two together that is the fourth time so remove the stitch marker and then you're going to join with a slip stitch and then in that round you will have 10 stitches for round 11 we're going to chain one and then we're going to do five double crochet two together so we're going to go straight into that first stitch yarn over and pull through and then into the next stitch yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through all of those stitches we'll mark that stitch we know that's our first double crochet two together and then we'll just work round and do those five double crochet two together so that's two three four and then five we're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and then we're going to tie off leaving a long tail end so you want to leave a nice long tail end and then what we're going to do is we're going to thread up our darning needle and then we're going to locate those last five stitches so we want to see where that next stitch is we have one two three four and five we're going to be working into the um, outside loop only so the front loop only so we'll come through and then the next stitch three four and five and then once you've been through all five of those loops you want to pull nice and tight and that cinches in the top of that thumb hole so I'm going to go through to the opposite side fairly close to the top and then come back through a stitch without pulling oops and then come back through a stitch leaving a loop and then tie off on that loop I can now bring that through the center of the thumb hole and 
and pull through. I'm going to turn it inside out just for now so that I can, oops, I've just caught a thread there. So I'm just going to come back out. So now I can sew this in using the rule of three. So coming in through the work, go back, working in different fibers. Try not to pull too tight. And then go back once more. And then we can fasten off. Turn it back the right way. And there we have our thumb. Okay, so now we have our thumb. And we're now going to be working on the convertible mitten part. So for this, we're going to be using the main color and we're going to be joining on round 20 at the seams. So this was the exact moment I realized I'd made two of the same um, hands <laughs> for my mitts. So let me just quickly tell you how not to do this because we are obviously want to make a right hand and a left hand. So when it comes to doing your um, right hand, you want to make sure that your first stitches are on this side of the work. So you're going to start on the seam. Then for your other hand, obviously this will be slightly different if you're watching the left-handed version. You want to make sure that this goes on and it doesn't do this like <laughs> what mine does. So for this side, you want to make sure that you're starting your first stitches in the opposite side of the seam. So here is the seam. You want to um, do it directly opposite. So exactly, you're building it in exactly the same way, but you are starting your first double crochets around the posts on the opposite side of the thumb so that this sits on the back of the hand and not on the front of the hand like this does. <laughs> So there we go, that is how you would do your opposite hands. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Back to the video. And we're going to be joining on round 20 at the seam. So round 20 on these mitts is just here, but you want to make sure that you're um, around about an inch or just less than an inch. Um, down from the top of your mitts if you're using some different mitts. About an inch is good, um, but I wanted to start these where the colour change was. So we're going to join this using a standing double crochet. So I have my slip knot on my hook. I'm going to go around that post, that double crochet post, and then pull through and then yarn over pull through and that is my first double crochet. So that is the standing double crochet. I'll take my stitch marker and place that in there. And now I'm going to work along this row. I'm going to do 12 of these stitches. So we have one, we'll go round the next post and do a double crochet two, around the next post, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Now I've chosen to do 12 because when I lay this flat, that sits nicely across the front of the mitt like so. What we're now going to do 
is do 14 chains. So the 14 comes from 12 stitches plus an extra for either side. So I'm going to do 14 chains, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14, making sure that your chain is not too tight. I'm then going to wrap it around the work and then turn the work again to bring myself back to the beginning stitch just to prevent things from getting twisted. Once you have done that, you want to take your stitch marker out that first stitch and then we can go ahead and slip stitch into that first stitch, which was the standing double crochet. And there we have round one. So for round two, we're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And then we're going to double crochet into that very first stitch. Mark the stitch, it really does help. And then we're going to um, double crochet into the next 11 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven. After this eleventh stitch, you should then have your chains. So we are going to work into that chain. And we're going to do 14 double crochets into that chain. So two, three, and four. Pause the video, work your way across that chain and then meet me back once you've done those 14 stitches. Okay, after those 14 double crochets, you're going to join with a slip stitch and you'll again have 26 stitches in this round. And then for rounds four through to 12, you're going to do one double crochet in each stitch. So it's chain one, double crochet into that very first stitch at the base of the chain one, mark your stitch and then work one double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that's for rounds four through to 12. So you've got quite a few rows to work of one double crochet. Again, if you have longer fingers, you can actually make this a little bit longer because after you've done these rows or rounds, we're going to be um, tapering off at the top or rounding off at the top to make into the mitts. So you could add a few more rows if you wish, but go ahead, work those rounds and make sure that you are keeping note of um, how many, what, which round that you're on because it is easy to lose track. Pause the video and then meet me back once you are ready. So once you've done your rounds four to 12, you should have something looking like this. And now we are ready for round 13 where we're going to decrease our stitches. We're going to chain one, and then we have a pattern re repeat. We're going to do five double crochets. So one, mark your stitch, two, three, four, and five. Double crochet two together. Four double crochets, one, two, three, 
and four, and then double crochet two together. And then you're going to repeat that once more. So five double crochets, double crochet two together, four double crochets, double crochet two together. And then you will have 22 stitches. So meet me back once you've done that pattern repeat once more. So at the end of this round, I'm going to join with a slip stitch and then go ahead and chain one for round 14. We're going to, again, reduce our stitches, this time from 22 to 17. So we're going to start off with a pattern repeat. So we're going to do two double crochets, one in that very first stitch, mark your stitch, and then into the next stitch. So two double crochets, and then double crochet two together. And we're going to repeat that five times. So for the second time, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet two together. Go ahead, work your way round until you have two stitches remaining. So once you've done that twice, you'll have two stitches. Meet me back and then we'll finish off round 14. So I have my two stitches left, which I'm going to double crochet into and then join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. And then for round 15, I'm going to chain one. We're going to reduce to 13 stitches. So we have another pattern repeat. We're going to do the double crochet, double crochet, and then double crochet two together. And we'll do that four times in total. So that's double crochet, double crochet, double crochet two together. Repeat that twice more and then meet me back once you're ready. So at the end of this round, you'll have one stitch remaining. So we'll go into that last stitch and then join with a slip stitch. For round 16, we're going to chain one and then we're going to do one double crochet. So into that first stitch and then we're going to do double crochet two together six times. So double crochet two together, one. Make sure that you're going across to that next stitch. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six, we're going to join with a slip stitch into that last stitch. And then we're going to tie off, leaving a long tail end. So we're going to do the same as what we did before. So you want to thread up your darning needle and then we want to find the outside loops of those stitches that we've just worked in the last round. And weave in and out of them all the way round. And once you've gone round, you can pull and cinch in those stitches. So now you just want to go ahead and Sew in the ends. I'm going to bring that forward uh, through. And then you can sew that in, uh, sew in the ends on the inside um, in order to neaten that up. So after you have done this, you have your mitt your convertible section of your mitt. You can sew in this initial end as well. Now you want to decide where you want to have your button. Now I have done 
a button on the other mitt on the inside so that when you pull it over, you have a button here in order to connect it down and keep it closed. However, you might want to have a button here so that when it's open, it doesn't flap around. So you have the option to do both and both are pretty easy to do. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll show you how to do the one where we have the button on the inside first, and then I'll show you how to do it on this section here. We could do both, it's totally up to you if you want to have two buttons. Uh, but I'll show you how to do uh, this one first because it, it does involve a little bit more crocheting, but it's still super easy. So go ahead, grab your main color again, and then meet me back. So with your main colour, you're going to take a look at your mitt section and then we want to come over to where the join is and then join with a standing double crochet into that first um, chain, the underside of the chain, the um, initial foundation chain that we did for this mitt section. So we're going to do a standing double crochet, which is our first stitch and we want to do seven in total. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So as we lay this down, this should bring us to the center of our mitt section. We're then going to chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we want to go back to the same stitch that we've just worked in and then do seven double crochets. One, so those two double crochets are in the same stitch. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Once you've done that, those seven double crochets, you can go ahead and fasten off. And then you can sew in your ends. And then this is the loop for the opposite side for when you come to sewing on your button. So I am going to show you what you would do in the top of your mitt um, if you want to connect this side, um, which is really easy. And then I will show you the placement and how to apply your buttons. Okay, so if you're doing it on the top section, you want a slip knot on your hook. We're going to go into the top. So around the last round, just go into one of the stitches. Ideally, as the um, mitt is folded closed, you do it on one side and the other side, so it's going to lay flat. And we want to slip stitch onto that stitch. We're then going to chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. You can do more if you want to, but this one doesn't need to be as big unless you have a larger button. And then go into the opposite side and work a slip stitch. And you can go ahead and fasten off and sew in your ends. And that is the top loop if you want to pin it back. So I'm going to sew in the ends here and then I will show you what to do for your buttons. So now we're going to do the buttons and we can either have a button here, which goes around this loop or a button on this side, which we will put around here. What you want to do is get a thread of your main color and then you also want to make sure that you have a needle which will go through your buttonhole. So we're going to go ahead and thread up our darning needle 
and then you want to decide where that first button is going. So I'll have mine in the center and probably between row two and three. So I'm just going to come up through this space just here and leave a little bit of a tail and then go through the first hole of my button and then through the second hole of my button and then I'm going to go back through the work like so, hold on to this tail and just fix it into place. Now you can actually go through and do that again if you wish to make sure it's nice and secure. And of course you might have a button which has four holes, in which case you will need to go through all four of the holes. But once you are happy with the placement, you can go ahead and tie a knot or a couple of knots in the two ends. Snip off your yarn and you can sew that in. So you can do that on that side so that this will stay open like so. And then if you wanted to do it on the other side, it would be exactly the same thing. You would just do it on these center stitches just here. So let's have a quick look how that would work. So I kind of want my first one to be here. So leaving a tail going through my button and then coming back through the next stitch. Make sure you've still got that tail end and place the button. Make sure it's not twisted. And then I'm going to come back through and back through. And there we have the second button to keep that nice and secure. So you can do one of these or both of these, it's totally up to you. Of course, if you don't like this at the end just here, you could have it a little bit lower down. So when it was open, you couldn't see, you can customize these however you wish, but this is the basic fundamentals of how you're going to turn your wrist warmers into convertible mitts. If you would like to make a matching beanie for your wrist warmers or your mittens, then you might wanna check out this video here.